just my little helper. He's uh, he's very well. He's really calm, quiet right now. He's kind of tired, worn out. But he may uh, join us in the videos today. So if you hear me, if I just like stop all of a sudden for some reason or other, I'm probably trying to tend to him. He's probably getting into some kind of mischief. Okay, before we begin, I'm going to go over a few things. Um, as I mentioned before, I've already made a painting with the... Uh, this is the new... This is the Van Gogh line of oil pastels. Um, it's the 60 count set. And um, like I said, I've already done one painting with it. Oops. Helps to not bump the camera, right? That would be very good doing the door. Bump the camera. Anyway, um, this is a 60 count set. I've already rearranged them to my, uh, my color palette. Um, you may want to do this. Uh, it's easier for you to reference colors with. Um, as, you, as I said before, I've already done a test painting with these to see how well we do. And, um, like I said, this is in, done entirely with this, this brand of pastels just to see uh, what it looks like. And this is, of course, of a rendition of a painting from a uh, oil, oil painting book. I think it was distributed by a company called WordPress, or I'm sorry, it's called Search Press. Uh, you can find it at searchpress.com. And if you're interested in the book, I'll put in a link at the bottom of the video for you, and you can go scope it out. Um, but anyway, as you can see, I've already, um, I'm going to be working today on Canson, uh, what's called oil and acrylic paper. And I like to. Here comes my helper. No, 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 no. You can't climb on that helper. You gotta tear it up. <laughs> Let me put this away real quick. I like that it is for now. Uh, <laughs> okay, as I was saying, um, this is the first time I've used this brand of um, paper. It's called wool and acrylic paper. It's 136 pound, um, and of course it's 11 by 14 inches. Um, and the reason I say it's, a, I mentioned the fact that it's 136, 136 pound weight is um, that leads me to my next uh, topic, and that is uh, different techniques of blending. Uh, we'll get into that. I'll make a, a separate video for that part later on and uh, do, just do a whole video on blending techniques. But uh, the, main, the main way I blend my wool pastel pieces is I, well I put down a, a base layer of color and then uh, I blend it. I just put down a little bit of pastel and blend it with a uh, odorless, this is called odorless terpenoid. You can find this at any arts and crafts store. Um, and I'll leave links in there for you to go and buy this if you will. Um, basically what I do is I take some of this. This is odorless terpenoid because if you're like, there's, certain, there's people that are like me that have uh, issues with they can't take the, the smell of turpentine straight turpentine indoor mineral spirits and all that and was, which is used for oil paintings and whatnot um, but I basically use this number one because you can use it indoors and it does not have any odor at all to speak of practically um, but I take it and put it in a little dish and um, what I do is when I Put down pastel as you will see 
later in the video series um, when I put down a little bit of pastel I blend it together with a brush just an old paintbrush <coughs> dipped in the uh, terpenoid and that's how I blend it together and you'll see that later on in the video um, but anyway um, I use a variety of uh, surfaces I use um, can uh, acrylic paper and I sometimes use uh, watercolor paper the paint the painting I just showed you that I initially did with the pastels is the test painting that was done on um, I think 140 pound watercolor paper and of course it kind of buckles a little bit but um, if you tape it down like to do a watercolor painting then the, the it won't draw up as much um, but Anyway, before we begin, um, I want to show you, this is a color chart with my pastels that I'm going to be using. And I've gone in and made up a color chart, swatch, color swatch chart, um, basically for two purposes. One is that you can use this as a quick reference to see what color you want to use in said painting. Um, and number two, whenever my pastel sticks get low and I want to reorder them, I just match it up with the uh, the color, and it has the corresponding numbers in it. I don't know if you can see this or not. I don't know if the video is focusing or not. <laughs> I mean, the camera's focusing. But I've gone in and wrote the numbers underneath the color swatch to uh, indicate which number it is. There, in this particular line. They have um, they have what they call tints or shades rather, and it's for tinting and toning. And basically, if you're not familiar what tinting and toning is, tinting and toning is like you take a, pa a, a painting, you put down a base layer of color, and you want to make it darker, you put in a darker color. Let's say, for example, you're making a uh, um, like a rose per se with red in color you put down a light color of red and then you'll go down and put a darker color like blue or black over that and then go back over it with another color of red and that will uh, create a tone Tinting is basically the opposite. You put down a color and then you go over it with a, light, a lighter color like a cream or a white to make it lighter. And I will make another video uh, in the series and, and discuss how that technique is. That's more advanced, I guess. Um, like I said, I am not a very professional artist by any means. But um, I, I mostly like to do renditions. I've done a few old pastel paintings that are something I've tried making up. Um, but I'm more or less a copyist, if you will. I like to do renditions. I find it very challenging and it's an easy way to learn to develop your own skills. And uh, mostly the work I do with old pastels is uh, impressionist type paintings and I will uh, if you watched my intro video my introduction video you will have seen the uh, samples of my work and of course if you're interested in buying prints of any of these I'll leave links down in the video for you um, <clears throat> and like I said I majority of what I make renditions of are paintings done by the Impressionists like Monet and Renoir. Um, I don't do very many Van Goghs. I'm not very much of a fan of Van Gogh's work. Some of his work is good. I like his Sunflower Still Life, but um, one of these days I may try to do a rendition of that. Um, but anyway, I'm, I mostly like to do landscape Impressionist paintings. Yeah, that's kind of like my style. Um, so anyway, um, another 
ticks of ticks, <laughs> tips that uh, I can share with you is things that you want to use while doing oil pastel paintings is number one I mentioned terpenoid to blend with you can blend with your finger if you can if you want some people blend with q-tips some people blend with uh, blending stomps um, or tortillas some of them are called um, I'm not sure what kind of um, solvents will blend well apart from terpenoid I know they make full pastels and um, there's my little helper again. <laughs> Bunch of um, anyway, they have there's a variety of um, pastels on the market that are water soluble. You can blend with water. I have never actually tried those before. Um, the brand I usually use the most is been has been Secura Crepas, and I know this is a paper castell case. I, I've used those pastels too for like making base layers they're good for making base layers but they're, they tend to be a little bit crumbly um, as far as them they're being you know student grade and artist grade these are these crepe Haas expressionists are in my opinion they're both professional grade and student grade uh, professionals and, and students use them alike that. My little helper has discovered my brush today. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I've mostly used these um, and some of my sticks were getting kind of low and it was getting kind of expensive to buy multiple, like you had to buy sets of six in order to, uh, a minimum order of six and that was going to be just about as much as the whole new set would cost. So I just decided I was going to try another brand of pastel, just to basically see what they were like. Um, so anyway, um, oh yeah, one of the tools of the trade tips is using a um, chip brush. Some people use chip brush, some use artist uh, graphite brushes. Um, basically anything that's got a soft bristle that you can go over your painting with and brush away some of the pigments that come off. Uh, another useful tip is um, or technique is called scraping and that's basically involved with uh, using plastic palette knives. Uh, I've seen some people use um, um, what they call the calligraphy pens, the nibs on the calligraphy pens that you use with the oil, you stick the canister into it and whatnot. Um, they have a handle that you can use. Some people use those. Uh, I don't use scraping technique all that much. Sometimes I do, but basically the only time I use the scraping technique is when I'm going to make grass. And in that previous painting that I showed you at the first of the video, some of the grass, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, I'll put a picture here for you to look at um, but there is uh, in this painting you can see in the bottom left hand side of the painting and I think some of the foreground I've gone in and scraped and um, anyway I'll show you that technique in a minute